Welcome everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is the first of a series of videos uh, titled Return of the Sacred Mother. And um, what I'm hoping to do with these uh, interviews and with different um, episodes is be able to uh, help women get back to our beautiful feminine selves. And today, I, uh, this episode is titled When Your Heart Calls. And I, would have the, I have the great pleasure and honor of introducing Maura Lippert. Maura, I came across her YouTube channel and she had put out some videos that had called her to action. So this is what I would like to do today is to give Maura a chance to uh, explain why she feels so compelled to speak up because I think more of us are going to be doing this in these crazy times. So Maura, welcome. It's nice Thank to you. see you. Good to see you, Sandy. Thanks for this. You're welcome. So, Maura, would you take a few minutes to explain who you are, what services you provide so people can get a sense of, of who you are? Sure. I'm a Canadian girl, and uh, I, am, I was a career banker for 25 years, and then I did a, a stint at a nature reserve as an executive director. I'm a mom, and I'm a grandmother. And about 10, 11 years ago, I had a big life change, a bit of a shocking change that propelled me into looking into what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I, I knew as much as I enjoyed the banking, that it was something else. I had this calling inside me and I, I wanted to explore that. So I had some time to do that. And I went to various trainings and schools and different things and um I have, I have my Reiki master, I'm a therapeutic touch practitioner, I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and uh, Institute of Functional Medicine health coach. So I see people in person and I coach internationally online as well. I'm licensed and insured to, to coach anyone anywhere. Haven't had any calls from Mars yet, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. These days, you don't know. Uh, so yeah, I love this work very, very much. I also do iridology. I'm a certified iridologist. And I was trained in three schools of iridology. There's usually just one, which is North American, but I was also trained in European and Australian. And uh, that that those three make a beautiful complement. And iridology is a great way to ascertain what might be going on in the body and and uh, it's great information in my work as a holistic nutritionist. So as a holistic nutritionist I help people with their lifestyle, food choices. Uh, I weave in sometimes some of the work that I, um, some of my training as a meditation teacher. I, um, I do teach insight meditation Vipassana style and I trained for that for a two-year program and it was excellent because I had to meditate for 45 minutes a day, every day for two years, as well as do some silent retreats. Uh, I'm also a level one Kundalini yoga teacher. I'm not teaching that right now because um, schedule's part of it. I love it, but I also had a, a knee injury that I've had various operations that sort of limits my movement, but I hope to get back to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I do other things, but that's the main things that I bring to this world, I hope. And of course, you know, I have a YouTube channel because that's how you found me. Yes. And it's interesting how many people are coming into a more holistic approach to looking after their health and wellness and even just their own emotional, spiritual well-being. Uh, yes. Right across the board, we're getting we're changing, it seems, from um, um, I, I don't want to call it a dysfunctional system, but a system that maybe people are starting to question more. So yes. thank you for that. And holistic, sorry, so holistic nutrition is body, mind, spirit. I should have said that. So thanks for saying that. Yes. yes. And it's, it's important great. that we do understand um, that we've got a lot of un unprogramming to do, like uh, uninstall some programming right across yes. the board. So when we look at the whole human being, we're, we're in a better position to be able to see what's going on, what that person needs, because often it's not the, the physical is the symptom. It's not the source of the problem. It's not the root You've cause. You've got it, Sandy. Right? Absolutely. So that's good to know. So, so can I ask him a question? When I came across your YouTube channel, I was quite impressed with your message and just the sincerity in your voice when you were speaking. What motivated you to start speaking up about what you see in the world? Uh, well, it was a calling. And um, I had, well, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about how I started waking up, but about 18, 20 months ago, I, um, 
I started realizing that people, people like me needed help. And so in the fall of last year into the spring, I had, I had my operation in November of 2020. So I couldn't do anything then. I had to put the YouTube on hold. I knew I wanted to do videos. I knew I wanted to maybe do an, a website with a blog, but I really wanted to do videos because uh, I thought about doing um, podcasts and I think I could do that too, but I like the interaction with people when they're looking at videos and looking at people's faces. And I, I just had this, it was sort of like a beautiful divine calling that it was something I needed to do. It's kind of like when I left banking and, and knew, knew I wanted to help people heal, but I didn't even know how to go about that. So this was a calling to, to do something. I, I bought the uh, equipment and you know, there's a fair bit of equipment you need a, in the spring of 2021. And then uh, I finally got off my duff, so to speak. And I had a lot of fear and I had a lot of confidence questions, and I'm sure you get that. And, um, you know, things like, well, who would want to listen to me? What do I have to say? And, you know, that negative voice that comes up and go away. You know, I don't need you. That's not what I want to hear. But it was just, um, it was a com compelling and it got stronger and stronger. And in my life, I've learned to listen to that because I know it's my high self. I know it could totally. be my guides helping me, angels, whatever. But it was just... I don't know. I have a feeling that someone will be helped by it, even if it's just one person with my videos, if at least one person benefits from it, then I've done my job. And I'm quite impressed that I know you're scared and you were still, you were nervous about speaking up and you did it anyways. And this is what I feel more people have the calling in them, but they're afraid to take that first step and put it out there. And it's so important that we speak up because there is a force that wants to do us in. And I'm hoping people are realizing this, whether you realize people realize this or not is up to them, but there's a force that does not have our best interests at heart. And we are the answer. We are the solution. So. Thank you for adding that about the force, because I think that was also a part of my process was not only feeling this inner knowing and inner guidance, but also feeling, seeing that force get bigger and angrier and meaner. And, and I know that there are great forces out there, too, that are trying to help us. And I wanted to be part of the great and and loving forces. Totally. And at the end of the day, uh, we all whether we speak up or not. We have to live with our own choices and nobody's going to be able to lie to themselves. It's not about what other people think of any of us. No one will be able to lie to themselves and say you knew and did nothing about it. Yes. That's and that's great. that's what we don't want to have happen. And I'm not using that as a fear tactic, no. but understand that we are here to be the change that we want to see uh, usher into the world. Right. One of your videos, I think you called it babies and cognitive dissonance. And I was really impressed because it takes a lot of courage to speak up, especially when we know what's physically wrong in this reality. And you really put yourself, um, like you, it, I'm not saying you put yourself out there, but you really connected and said, hey, we've got to do something. You put yourself into your higher um, level of integrity that we have to do something. No, this is not me. This is not my problem. I'm not impacted by it personally but I'm doing something about it. And I was so impressed with that video. So could you talk a little bit about what motivated you uh, in that particular video? Well, I just want to acknowledge, first of all, that you're a hero heroine in this area too, Sandy. And, and I really, I hadn't seen any of your videos before I started, but I've watched a lot of them since. And you, I'm, I really honor you and, and, yay yay sandy for Thank the you. work you do because it like you said it's not easy it's it's um it's very difficult to do it's a very tender subject and um yeah so let's just say hats off to sandy um to all and, of us yeah. to everybody who's speaking all of us all the truth all of us out there. everybody yeah yes yeah. so that particular it's interesting because that video was actually the video that when I was feeling this urge that that's what one of the biggest propelling forces was who's looking after the children. They're after our children, they're after our grandchildren. Um, <clears throat> and when I learned, excuse me. When I learned, and I hadn't known it before I started doing this investigation 
I was aware of some of it because I'm a child of, of, um, of uh, sexual molestation. Um, happened twice when I was little. And so I'm aware of it, of course, everyone's aware of it, but it's, it's once you go down that rabbit hole, it's really in your face about what is actually happening in our society and no one talks about it, no one wants to talk about it. And so uh, um, <clears throat> obviously I've got some emotion going on in my throat. Uh, it was, it was um, to help protect the babies and, and to help people understand that it's happening. And I tried to present it in a way that was gentle and yet powerful. And um, of course, with the way things are right now with um, censorship, you have to be very careful. Um, so I had a lot of challenges with that, with that subject. Um, but I got around that. And uh, that was, that was when, I, when I listened to that voice that was saying, don't bother, no one will listen to you. Another beautiful voice came up and said, what about the babies? What about the babies? So if I do it just the channel, just for that one video, I thought it's worth doing. And so that's what motivated me. I mean, that when I found out about what was going on, I, as I say, I knew about it, but when I really dug into it and really found out, well, I think we're going to talk about this a little later, but it was just, there was so much pain and, and disbelief. And um, disbelief. I didn't want to go there for a long time, but we'll talk about that, I think. So, yeah, and I, the, I just wanted to do it for the babies. Yes, and, and it's an amazing video. And and the mom, the, yeah. Yes, the family. Do you know, there's, um, whatever this push, this dark forces that is pushing against humans, our sex energy is our life force energy. And when we realize what it is that they're actually trying to do by molesting children or, or even worse, I'm sorry that happened to you. So many people have told me their stories of pain. And when I started, I, I, I look at the macro and I look at the micro, what it does to a person, but what it, the whole, and I would start sending out emails and I've sent these emails. Like I can get my keyboard just a clicking and my emails, like they had intent, they had in, uh, direction, they had solutions. And when I'm sending them out to the powers that be, and then all of a sudden they're blocking me, they, they know. And when we realize this is intentional and turning a blind eye is no longer going to be an acceptable practice, because if you're not standing up for the young ones, we're going to see who you are. I've had two men tell me, I don't care about the children. So what? So what? You know, the prime minister's um, buddies are pedophiles. Who cares? Guess what? They got a block. You're a, a weak man. If my masculine is stronger than their masculine because they don't have the integrity to stand up, who wants to be around you? Who wants to be in partnership, friendship, relationship with a, a weak individual who doesn't care about the little ones? That's not the human nature. But I'm very impressed um, that, that even in spite of what happened to you, you're standing up. And what I'm hoping to do with part of this series, because so many women have been abused, that they get to the point they realize that is something that happened to me. I have the memory, but I don't have the uh, nervous system or the emotional charge in my body anymore. But we're coming, we're addressing the people who are turning a blind eye, right? Yes. So that's without getting on a soapbox, but um, that's but really important. I just want to add, me. if I'm sorry, if I may, the um, the words that came to mind just now were that that was my sacred mother energy speaking up to say, do this, reveal this, talk about this. You can't normalize it because it's not normal, yeah. but unfortunately it is part of society. So it has to be brought out there. But every single person on this planet has a sacred mother. Yes. And we have to listen to her. Men do, grandfathers, you know, boy, we all do. Right. And we, we want to acknowledge that. And, and I, you know, hats off to you again for doing this series. It's beautiful. And I'm so glad to be part of it. And I do recognize that men are being hurt as well. Thank you for saying that. I recognize, but it's so many people speaking up and I just happen to listen and bring the information together. So many men have been hurt. There is a report in France that the Catholic church, and I'm not picking on any, I'm not religious, I'm not political, I'm not gender specific. I go to where, it doesn't matter if it's the Boy Scouts, wherever there's children is where you find the abusers. They said 80% of the victims in the Catholic church are boys. So it has nothing to do with, oh, if they only could get married and they'd have sex with a woman, they wouldn't affect the ch uh, hurt the children, right? And guess what card I pulled this today? So I asked about what, what energy to be in for this video. Oh. The mother's <laughs> prayer. <laughs> oh, well, that's beautiful. 
So I knew what I was on the right that? Um, that journey that? of love. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yes, uh, Lana oh. Fairchild, I think is her name. Yeah, Lana Fairchild, uh, Richard Cohn. Um, so, so it's it's just sometimes we want to know what confirmation. What are we going to talk about? And it was just that was my green light that I'm on the right path. Saying that. So even hey. though, yeah, even though we're talking about the Sacred Mother series, there's sacredness in men as well. When of men course, do beautiful yeah. things for other people, that's their feminine energy. And I, I don't want to go into it in this particular episode with what we're talking about. But when we understand how powerful our masculine and feminine energy is, electromagnetic, we are unstoppable. So that's that'll be another another topic, right? But that was just um, that was just really nice timing. That's beautiful. So, so can I ask what impressed me about what you were saying? I knew you were struggling in the one video you were doing and you, you, you weren't sure what to say. When I say struggling, I don't mean not um, not able to go forward, but the, you weren't sure what to say. How do you process difficult energies or difficult information? And the way I'm, why I'm saying this, I've gone down so many rabbit holes. There's videos that I've seen that I could watch 10 minutes and I had to go for a walk. I come back and watch 10 minutes and I had to go clean the bathroom. I watch 10 minutes and I'm vibrating and I'm in the kitchen, in the fridge, looking for something to eat, trying to calm my emotions down. Some of this information is so hard to take and we're not stopping. It's coming out. And I know I'm not saying this to you. Uh, you already know, but this information is coming out. Nothing is going to stop it. How do you, do you have any tips or um, ideas of how to process difficult emotions when you're going through finding out the truth and choosing not to lie to yourself? There's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll start it when when it started to hit me how big this was, and that was when in last well in March of 2020 when we had that uh, the first of the downs wave. Yeah. And we had a and they told us to stay home, etc. And I wasn't working, so I don't know if the evil ones realized how much time they were giving us to do research. <laughs> That's a great way of it. looking at it. <laughs> I love it. You know, thank you very much because I wouldn't have known if I'd been at work, I wouldn't have had the time to, to do these <laughs> deep dives. So great way it, to look yeah, at it. It is a good way to look at it. Yeah. So I was, um, I was, I won't say obsessive, but it was close to obsessive about finding out the truth because when all this started going down, I mean, I was afraid. I, the first came to mind thing that came to mind was bioweapon and um and it turns out that's what it is or True, that was yes. potentially what it was at any rate i i wanted to learn more and i knew that on the tv on any news channel i was going to find that so i had a lot of really um amazing conversations i have some beautiful beautiful women friends i have some great men friends too but i have some really beautiful women friends that i'm very close to and i'm very blessed and we would go for walks and discuss, um, you know, one of the first ones was with my naturopath slash friend, a very good friend. And she and I were just saying, you know, this just doesn't make sense. You quarantine the sick, not the healthy. And anyway, um, she and I talked about a few different things we had seen and it started to raise questions. So I, I dug more and I dug more. And um, and then I came across the um, the 10 part show by that um reporter Janet us Janet yes yeah. and I don't know if I can say the name but the first part of it's fall sure of the cabal uh, yeah and it's a 10-part series so that really 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 helped me shocked me so the processing of that was honestly you said at one point how not to lie to yourself or how not to stop it from coming in I had to stop it from coming in and you're so wise in the fact that you knew to do 10 minutes 10 minutes and then go do something eventually I learned that yeah but at the beginning I had cognitive dissonance I I said to myself I have I've uncovered and learned so much shocking shocking unbelievable truths I'm a very positive person and I look out at the world with love most days and I expect people to be loving and caring and kind and great humans and that's just the way I've always been. And um, maybe it's naive, maybe it's being a Pollyanna. I just feel that I'm one of those people that sees a glass half full. And um, I had great parents that encouraged researching, 
But when I hit that cognitive dissonance, there was a time when I couldn't go down that road. So I kind of parked it. And I said, I'm going there when I feel ready. Totally. I'm very in touch with my heart. I'm a very intuitive person. And I, I believe I lead from my heart a lot, although I'm an Aries sun sign. So I tend to, you know, barrel out there. <laughs> But I have a cancer moon, so that calms things down, thank goodness. Balances it yeah. out, yes. And cancer rising, yeah. So it's an interesting combo. But yeah, it was there was a lot of denial, cognitive dissonance, and then I'd go back to it and I'd talk to friends about it. And actually, a lot of the friends I talked to, most of them said I had no idea. Um, and, you know, it feel I had to really energy, energetically protect myself. Oh, so, totally. Yeah, when you wake up, anybody waking up, if you are going to go down um, certain rabbit holes, you have to protect your energy, because I believe we each have a signature, and they know who each of us is, and you can be attacked in dream state, you can be attacked in the um, astral plane, you can be attacked energetically just by strangers, it, it, we, have to, we have to understand that as soon as you start researching and you're waking up, our job is to wake up. Their job is to keep us asleep. So you might get all of a sudden your internet connection doesn't work or there's something that um, you're having computer problems and you think this can't be, this it's too much of a coincidence. It can't be a coincidence, but it's not. It's, we're being yeah. targeted. Part yeah. of it's the AI, which is beyond what we're going to talk about today. Yes. Uh, I, I also have a very, very, I learned when I was in um, the Reiki master program. And most of those are a two day thing. Mine was 10 months. It was a weekend, a, a whole, a full day, a month for 10 months and tons of homework in between. So I'm so glad I went to the teacher that I did because my fear when I started doing Reiki was, you know, what if I bring my crap into this? And she taught us how not to do that. And she also, we went through massive spiritual emotional inventories and and did a lot of dumping and clearing that was in the early to, to 2011 2012 anyway i learned at the end of that when i when i um was attuned for the reiki mastership i had this beautiful download of information that when i keep my vibration as high as it is when i'm doing reiki and, and sometimes that's a work to do. Like I, I, I don't do a ton of it, but when I do it, I'm always in a very high vibration of love. And so when I, when I am doing it, I don't feel there's any possibility. I, I, I agree with what you say. I think there, we can be targets, but I also agree that they have a spectrum of light that they can see. And when we're in a high vibration, it's like a, a dogs hear things we can't hear. I believe we're almost out of there. We're at such a high level. We're almost out of their vibration and they have no idea who we are, or what we are. And we're protected by that love and that high God vibration. Um, so when I was doing this, uh, that being said, when you read this stuff and listen to it, your energy can take a tank and just, you totally. know, you know, this, what the hell is wrong with people and what is wrong with humanity and I, as I say I really believe in the good of everybody but there is evil out there and and I found that probably the hardest is to come to terms with that and realize how much there was so you know salt baths if you can walks in nature walks in nature walks in nature when I was going through all this I was going out for at least one huge walk a day Sometimes with friends, sometimes on my own. I have two cute little dogs that come with me and they love walks. So um, I had to be in nature and it's good. It was the spring. So the weather was great. But processing things in the trees and grounding, you know, take my shoes off, walking on the ground, connecting to Mother Earth. Um, she, of course, is our big sacred mother. And um, that was very protecting and healing. There were times when I'd stop a video, like you say, and just say I'm going to get away. back to this yeah. and I do a bunch of smudging with with um, cedar or, or sage or um, you know uh, incense essential oils I'm very blessed that because of the work I've done I'm very in tune with where my energy is so um, I know the warning signs if it's getting too low and I have to back off but once I allowed that door to open again I, I took bits at a time 
I would try to, once I saw something very disturbing, I would try to listen or listen to something that was more beautiful and enlightening and the, the people who were out there speaking about love and, and beauty and um, the sacredness of who we are to sort of help, you know, put maybe not a bandaid on, but help heal that wound in my heart. It's important though that we notice that um, I, uh, this is, so a lot of the, what you're talking about with the sage, the essential oils being in nature, those are those are pretty much standard that anybody who's in the holistic fields will go to those those particular modalities for help singing bowls, um, you know, different things like that. But it's really important to know that when we go through these emotions, there's no such thing as a bad emotion. That if you're angry, it's okay to be angry. Angry might tell you you need to set a boundary. So, so I do understand what you're saying about keeping the vibration high. But I also realize that we have to go through the range of emotions. We have to oh, feel absolutely. the anger. Yeah. We have to feel the fear. But the idea is once you feel it and you process it, and there's different ways to do that, that you can get through it. So I, have, I work with a lot of people who feel shame because they, they're angry. They have anger issues. And I show them on the, the cone of consciousness that anger vibrates higher than fear. And I say, maybe the anger saved your life because it brought your vibration up. And they look at me and because nobody's ever said anger is a good thing. You don't have the right to go and do a drive-by on somebody because you're angry. It doesn't give you the right to act out on it, but it's okay to feel it because a lot of people are going to go through these emotions. Look for practitioners like Maura, myself, uh, any of the holistic practitioners or spiritual and emotional practitioners to help you get through some of these things if you need to. Join a support group if there's somebody, a group you know of who's talking about this. Be able to hear other people talk about it. And most of all, breathe. Breathe into your abdomen. Keep the air going because when we're afraid or we're shocked, we tend to clench and tighten our muscles. Well, then that restricts the oxygen level. You might as well, well wear something over your face if you're going to do that. <laughs> so and I know we're joking a little bit about this because it's still hard to take. But it's really important to understand whatever you're going to go through. There's no, it's, there's no not normal. Like it doesn't matter. Okay. It's going to shock you. Thank you for, for saying that Sandy. And uh, I didn't mean to, and I don't think I said this, but one of the worst things that people can do, I think is to spiritual bypass it. Totally. And I wasn't recommending that, but to I'm say, not saying you are. Oh, no, everything's love and light and we don't have no. to worry about that. It, it, you're right. You have, it's so important to feel the emotions and not be ashamed of any emotion you have. I mean, as a little girl, I was taught, Whenever I cried, that was okay. When I have a tantrum or I had anger, I was locked into the basement until I shut up. And I was the youngest of four. And it was, you know, I believe wow. there was a witch down there. And so I learned never to be angry. And I learned how to people please. That was my way of coping with yeah. that situation. And bless my parents. They were great in many ways. But of course, we make mistakes as parents. And shame, I think shame and grief are the lowest vibrations on that scale, period. Yeah, for sure. And anger is certainly, at least it's action. And there's appropriate anger, you know. So um, I, I had to go through tons of therapy. A lot of it was Jungian therapy to actually learn how to, in a healthy way, feel anger and to, and to encourage it. Yes, that's a great visual. Yeah, you're right about the shame and the grief and the I anger. So I'm don't, not trying to interrupt you there, but just to explain no, no, it's that fine. none yeah. of these are wrong. But you have to understand. I mean, you like the collective. Why do you feel shame? Why do you feel anger? Is there something that needs to be cleared? Did some is it somebody else putting you in shame to control you? Is it a pattern you have to un undo so that you can get back to your true self which is the sacred mother energy but to do this it's great that you're it's not great that that happened to you as a child but it's great that you're explaining it i had i had deep monsters under my bed my mother told me i was full of it and it's like and then so i did a bypass because i couldn't handle the thought of them being there so i just pretended everything was normal you know yeah. so no, no no blame or anything it's not about yeah. blaming it's about not understanding how all of this works yeah and you probably had a witch down there who knows who knows what was in the basement it, you're, yeah. you're probably not wrong but yeah. children can see more easily in other dimensions right yeah so it's and great I, that we're sharing all this thank you and i think i just like to also say that if a person is a victim of that kind of behavior, you know, gentleness, tenderness and gentleness and love for oneself is the, is the, is sort of the key to opening this up. And if, if any, you know, trauma comes back that 
they can't handle, you know, of course, close, close out that video and do whatever you need to do to look after yourself. I certainly went through that to a certain extent, but I'm blessed that I had processed a lot of what I had been through as a child. But yeah, it can really trigger things. And um, I would encourage anyone who, who has those triggers that they get some help, whatever that help is, and be very gentle and kind to themselves. Because there's a lot of shame in that. I went through shame that it was something I did that caused that. Because victims are told, what were you wearing? What did you do? Did you encourage it? Were you smiling at this person? Our society is dysfunctional and child yeah. sex abuse is intentional. Yeah. Yeah, it, and without child sex abuse, we wouldn't have the mental illnesses and the physical manifestation of illness we have. Yeah. I would like to add, if I'm not trying to shock anybody, but I bet you half the women I know have been sexually abused. So the numbers yes. one in four are a lie. That's yes. to make it look less than. Males are uh, victims of child sex abuse more so than the, the, the males, the experts in mental health. We're trying to decriminalize pedophilia, what have you know. So we really have to look at people's intentions. It's not okay it happened to you, but it's just your body would have reacted to uh, the, the stimulation. Everybody's body does. So don't take it that you are you liked it or you wanted it or anything along that line. Get help. Speak with somebody, Maura, myself. I, I can tell just from talking to Maura, she's not your traditional... I'm gonna, I don't wanna use the word healer because I don't believe in that word. I think we all heal ourselves, but you're like a guide, a facilitator is what I call myself. I help people facilitate and navigate through their own, their own circumstances. So if this does trigger you because you see it happening on the video or talking about it, this is more prevalent and the experts know they planned it that way and that's why they're teaching it in the education system. This is for another video. Notice the sacred, mom, the sacred mother energy. We're mama bears right now too. Like you go after the young, we're coming after you kind of energetically, emotionally, verbally, right? Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, Maura. I'd like to just add, thank you. That was really good, Sandy. And, and it's funny that you say that about the healer. I, I believe I'm a healer of myself and I facilitate healing, which is why I called my business Guided Holistics. Because nice. I help guide people. Um, yeah, I don't heal people, people at all. I help facilitate their healing. And, and another thing you said about the, the number of women that probably have been, if, if anyone were to go to, um, what's his name, that doctor, oh, he wrote the book, uh, the, he writes about addiction. He's a great Canadian. Uh, Gabor Maté. Thank you, Gabor Maté. He says in one of his talks and many of his talks that I've seen, that if you go to a meeting of any of the Alcoholics Anonymous, Sex Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, and you ask how many people, if there are 10 people in the room, how many people have been sexually molested? About eight out of 10 will raise their hand. So it's way more prevalent than we think. And I think that's one of the shocking things is I knew that it was because of seeing Dr. Mate, Mate, but the whole, the way that it's built in, into an industry it is totally an industry. It's it's much more pre it's much more lucrative to the bad guys than drugs. Well, part of what they do with children, of course, is drugs, and my video talks about that. But um, it's it's the biggest part of the economy in the whole world, and so many people, whether knowingly or unknowingly, are part of that economy. That disgusting, evil. It has to be shut down, and so the only way we can do that is by talking about it and knowing about it you know things like just as we are right now yeah. Ben Shapiro just to just to put this in perspective Ben Shapiro is a public figure he wrote a book called Brainwash and talks about what goes on in the universities I think it's on page 68 of that he says child sex abuse is the cornerstone of western society because without abuse you wouldn't need mental health professionals you wouldn't need the doctors to be able to treat the um, diseases that come up from suppressing your emotions your nervous system. You don't need the, the police to go and try to break up homes uh, uh, or, or they don't, for every, they say 10% of people report sex abuse in Canada. Out of every thousand reports, they get two convictions, which is a 0.2% conviction rate. You double that, they're still under one half of 1%. Do we think the courts, the judges don't know this? Okay, I'm gonna calm down because I can go into a hole. I can, I can show you exactly how it happens in Canada, right? So, so when we start to realize these people aren't stupid, they're all complicit and they get a, they get a paycheck. Family and Children's Services, 70% in Canada, they say of the children who are human trafficked, have a history with Family and Children's Services in the United States, it's 80%. You think these bitches don't know? That is the lack of the sacred 
holy mother energy, the sacred mother energy, the women who are willing to look to see what children are at risk and then get them into the system. Usually it's a broken home or problems in the home or the child is at risk, right? So we're gonna call this whole thing out, including the middle ground. It's in the universities, it's everywhere right now, but they are trained to think that it's normal. There was a booklet I um, saw, it was from Germany. I think it was, it was published in English, but it was in German that said, if your baby's upset, you're supposed to rub their genitals. So they're trying to get the parents to stimulate the child. We have, our genitalia can be um, stimulated from birth. Like there's, there's so much work done at the Kinsey Institute and I'm hoping I'm not shocking anybody. This wasn't where I was planning on talking, but babies like 10 months old, they made it have an erection, like boy babies, 24 um, orgasms in 26 hours. So now you've got the parents who are encouraging them to rub their genitals. Can you imagine if you're talking to your friend at the coffee shop and your friend is upset and you start stroking their privates? It would pop you. Like if it's not good for the adults, it's probably not good for the children. You know, like there's no, like we've lost our ability to use common sense. Like, oh, the expert tell us this is okay. And it's like, no, no, let's go back into ourselves. Let's, let's go back and use common sense about this. Because if I can't turn around to my friend and start rubbing their genitals when they're upset, you probably shouldn't do it to a baby who can't defend themselves. Like, where's the, the academics who put this paper out? Is it, you know, like, it's crazy. So this is great. We're talking about it, Maura, and I'm not trying to minimize this for anybody. I just want people to know that this is very prevalent, that this is happening. And we're going to help the people who've been hurt. We're going to come into the present and create a new foundation of understanding what it means to have healthy relationships within family structures in society so we can go forward and create the world that you're talking about where people are nice and they're, they're considerate and they're, they're generous because I think a lot of people are here that we were the star seeds that were brought onto the planet and many of them came before their time so they've already got service to others down but we live in a society that's focused on service to self so they keep getting hurt or take it like they take take their feet out from under them so we are changing a lot of this and collapsing timelines I just wanted to add that so we know there's hope too right takes a lot of courage for you to speak up. I'm really impressed with that. So with the sacred mother energy, where do you see, um, where do you see the sacred mother's role in society? I, I don't know if I was, um, if I uh, talked to you about that, like, where do you see us going forward as the women? I'm not excluding the men in this, but as the women taking the role of the sacred mother, where do you see the possibilities of that growing? Well, it's, it's been really frustrating not seeing it happen. And, uh, it's not that, I mean, it's, it's really starting to happen now, but in the last 20 months, I've, you know, had conversations. A lot of my friends are in action. They're doing something for, for, to raise awareness and to fight for the children. And, you know, whether that's, I have some friends who go to rallies every weekend. I have some friends who are trying to go to school board meetings. I have friends who have taken their children very wisely taken them out of the school board system and i'm not saying all teachers are evil not at all it's but their curriculum is disgusting or in many ways it's it, there's very unfortunate parts of it and people women and our uh, parents are realizing that and taking their kids out of the and doing some a lot of homeschooling is popping up i'm so happy and i have some friends who don't feel comfortable getting out in the world to do something so what they do is they they do meditation and they do prayer and they do sacred ritual for humanity. So that's great. As long as a person is active in some way, a person may not be well enough to be active. So, okay, that's where you're looking after yourself because you have an illness or God forbid, but you know, if someone's really not well and their full-time job is looking after themselves, then that in their own way is helping humanity just by having an approach of love and gentleness and peace towards oneself and compassion, that in itself is contributing to the greater good. Whereas when we go into those negative places of hatred for these demons or shame about what happened or whatever, we're feeding the negative. So I believe we all have a very active role as I said before, everyone on this planet in their own way and and the women even, uh, you know, lots of women aren't mothers, but they but they can still act for the children and right. and be be sacred mothers to each other. I mean, we we need our friends. We need our I'm so blessed to have a group of like minded people, but a lot of people don't. So 
how can you find that? How can you be that for someone? How can you, how can you offer a friendship to someone where you can sort of mother each other in a sacred way and look after each other? So I guess it's all about the heart and, and, and I think I know that people don't realize how very powerful they are. I know. <laughs> and I'm one of those people, but even our, just the energy, uh, you know, all about that, given your beautiful work that you do, Sandy, but a lot of people don't even realize that the energy that they are feeling from second to second is contributing or taking away from the greater good. Totally. So, and it's not about bypassing the negative, um, you know, those lower frequencies, like you said, it's important to feel them and work through them, but to know that we always have choices. Every second of the day, we have a choice and we have a choice to do something for for love and compassion or we have a, a, a choice to destroy. And sometimes we make the wrong choice and that's okay because we're human. We're humankind and we're doing the best we can. But all of us are so, so, so much more powerful than we have any idea. And that's part of what we've been, part of what we've been told for the last, possibly 10,000 years or more is that we're not powerful and we're little and we don't matter and we're slaves and we have to pay taxes and we have to do what we're told and put on the face diapers and da, 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 you know, get the, the medicine that we don't want. We're told to do that because we're nothing to them. Well, we, we they're actually very afraid of us because w once we realize what our power is, watch out. Watch out. And this is so impressive that you're um, saying that for everybody right now, because when we realize how powerful we are and what we can do with our mental energy, our thoughts are the electric, what we put out there, our hearts are what magnetize and bring it back to us. When we understand this process and we know that we're IA intelligent already, it's going to change the game. We're not AI. They mimic us, not the other way around. I like what you said earlier about people um, you know, doing what they can. One thing people can do, put it out there, say it out loud, <clears throat> use your voice and say, how can I help? What, what group of people am I, should I be working with or should I be aligned with? And I just saw an interview with Christopher James from A Warrior Calls and a woman named great. Maria Zach. It was an amazing interview about they're going after everybody who has anything to do with what's going on with this tyranny that we're experiencing right now. And it's interesting. So she says in her video, in this one video I watched, she goes, we will not pay you a bonus to tell the truth about what crimes are happening in your government organization. That's your job to tell the truth. But if you're not telling the truth, then we're going to include you on the other side. And I'm like, finally, somebody has got some gumption to stand up and call it what it is. You know, a lot of times people say, well, that's not, I, I can't speak up. I'll, I'll lose my pension who pays your pension It's the taxpayers you know like this is you and i i hope we can do a video just on the money side of things yeah and another another point on destroying sometimes destruction is creative we have to destroy this old to create the new so it's the yes. burning of the old system so yes. so as women as sacred mother we can create and we can destroy but there's a time to do one or the other and I have to make sure if I'm going to go out in destroy mode, I'm not doing it for my ego. I'm doing it because this needs to fall. We've given them every chance to do the right, right thing. They can't right. do it. We don't have to do anything to let it fall, but create a new system that's better, right? But we still that's have right. to call out what's going on. So I love I love what you said there. That's so important, Sandy. And and ask for guidance. You know, I know I'm here for a reason. We yes. I really believe that every single person on this planet has lined up to be here at this time. Yeah. And some of us, like you and I, we're I, star seeds, awakening people, whatever. We're doing something, but lots of people are doing things. Totally. And, and we're creating this beautiful new earth. And every, every time my thoughts go to, you know, they brought out this new rule or, or this new piece of paperwork you got to carry with you and you can't get into a restaurant, blah, 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 blah. When I'm my fit, when my, as I said, I'm a very optimistic person, but I do have moments where I go into fear mode and, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to look after myself? And I can feel just my heart crunching down, mm -hmm. closing up. And I'm very careful to remember that every thought I put out there is creating the reality. It's creating the timeline for myself and others. Whereas when I think, okay, and again, a lot of my thoughts are so much of my thoughts are tied to my heart. I'm, I'm very connected to both. And when I have a thought, okay, that's fear. 
and what can we do about this, then okay, more, let's think about or let's journal about what we want to create in this world. And I describe sometimes in journaling or I'll be walking and I'll talk, I'll be by myself and talking to the girls and people will think I'm nuts, I'm talking to my dogs, but saying, this is the world I want to create. It's peaceful, it's beautiful. Totally. We have great abundance. Medicine is actually medicine. It's not this pharma, big dollar. Petrochemical industry. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, we could have a whole show on that too. <laughs> But at any rate, yes, I, whenever I go into fear mode, I remind myself, Maura, you're here for a reason. You're here not just for yourself, obviously, but others. So let's think about, let's feel into the world that you want to live in, the world that we're creating for the children, et cetera. So that, that really helps me. Yes. And it's really good to know it. It doesn't mean because we're talking certain strategies that is the same for everybody. Yeah. If you have got um, a, had a traumatic past or that you, and you haven't had a chance to process your emotions and clear that out of you yet, maybe you need to go into that fear and sit in it for a bit and ask yourself, why am I so fearful? Because I know some people were fearful. Um, one of the women I'm working with right now, she's, she's in her 70s and she's so afraid and she's afraid of men. Don't, please don't take this personally, any of the gentlemen who are watching this. She's afraid of men because of what happened in her childhood. So now she's going through with guidance. I'm helping facilitate. And she's dealing with certain practitioners in her world. And I'm showing her how to speak and not be afraid. And so now she's repatterning herself. I don't imagine she's going to be in this fear. She's been there maybe a month or so by now. Maybe she'll have another month and then she'll have confidence that she doesn't have to go into fear that she can handle the choices that, that present to her. So it doesn't matter where you are in it. Sometimes you sit in it. Sometimes you go, I'm going to observe it. I'm in fear again, but I've already blown through fear. So why am I feeling it? Oh, it's the collective. I'm going to do exactly what you just said, Maura, and go into heart-centered, positive things. So don't, don't compare. There's no comparison to where anybody is at. But it's your job to know where you're at so you can steer your ship and guide you out of where you're where, where you don't need to be anymore. That's so true. And I'd like to add, I think one of the most helpful things through my coming to where I am at right now, and I'm a work in progress. I've got tons of work to do. But you've done a lot though. I can tell more. You've done a lot of work. That's why you know that you can change your thoughts. So I can see I can see the thank you. the work that you have done. And I just wanted well, to add the people who are still going to start going through and, and then do yes, their own. Yeah. That's right. Well, ditto to you. I can see you're an old soul. So and totally. an old soul that has done a lot of work. Um I guess one of the most helpful things that I started to do fairly early on was to build that point of awareness you know, that, that, that observer in my, in my heart and mind that would, you know, it, it's, it's a practice to build it up, to sort of observe, well, why did I have that thought? Or why did I say that? And it's not a judger, it's no. an observer. And just raise that question. Oh, okay, what's that about? And it, it with, with non-judgmental kindness, it's very, it's so helpful. And the more you do it, it's like a muscle, the more you do it, the more strong it gets. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. I went for a walk last week and I was coming back home and I was rounding the corner to come into, into this area and I felt anxious and I'm like, and I thought, I, I thought I felt anxious. So I'm reading my emotions and going, why? I've just been out for an hour. Why, what, why am I a little anxious right now? And I, I asked myself, I muscle te tested, do I have anxiety? No. Do I need to ground? Yes. So, uh, so I misread my emotions because you don't know if you're picking up collective oh, energy. Sure. And as I was walking, every step I took, I grounded my energy. I was halfway down the block and I had already grounded and I was back into where I needed to be. And like you say, this is practice. But once you start practicing, you ask yourself, why is this happening? You don't care the answer. You just want to know what it is. That's and the right. Answers yeah. and the questions. And yeah. then you go, okay, it's not anxiety. Okay, I need to ground. Of course we do, because there's so much solar energy coming in. We're getting hit with a lot of things right now. Yes. It's all good. A lot of it's good, but we're getting hit with certain things that it's beyond our control. And as you're saying, the more aware you are, the more you can see what's going on around you, the more you clear out traumatic experiences and troubling emotions that come up for you and clear out your nervous system, the more curious you can be as to what other possibilities are out there. So we're all a yeah. work in progress, regardless of where we're at, because we're in such a growth spurt in humanity right now, I think. Oh, that's so true, Sandy. And that's a great process that you have that you went through. Good for you. 
the the other thing we I'd like to acknowledge is that a lot of people who are watching this are probably extremely empathic oh, yeah. and intuitive. There's way more of us now, I think, than there ever has been on the planet. And so many of my clients who come to me for physical ailments, yeah, of course, we always talk about the body, mind, spirit aspect of it, the emotional aspect of it. But as intuitives, as, as empaths and compassionate people, you know, if we don't have appropriate boundaries, and I don't mean walls that we never feel what other people are feeling, but to just learn, is that mine or is that someone else's? I mean, when I was in learning Reiki, that was such an important part because I stuff would come over me. I go, holy crap, where did that come from? When I was early in my in my training and then you know you're in the middle of a of a, a treatment or not a treatment but with a session with somebody and you know it, it was very important to have that observer saying oh okay okay that's not mine god bless this person they're going through some rough stuff uh, but to not take it on and totally. intuitives and compassionate people and empaths all of those are you you're probably nodding your head saying absolutely it's so hard not to take other people's stuff on and there's nothing wrong with compassion, but when your energy starts to leak out and theirs is taking over, then it's important to, to build build a spiritual wall and a bubble or a ball, bubble maybe is a better word, and protect them. And we've talked about protecting yeah. yourself before. So that's that's so important right now that people and people who who are that and don't know it, it's so shocking all of a sudden to go oh, wow, I wonder if that was mine. I wonder if that was mine. I wonder if that was mine. I knew that didn't come from me, you know, that sort of thing. So just being aware, it's not necessarily your energy that you're feeling. I mean, it's yeah. interesting that you're feeling it and you're obviously very, very gifted, but we all need to protect ourselves. Yes, and it's going to be the empaths and the people who have compassion for others when the truth comes out. They're going to be the ones who are hurting the most because they feel for others. The people who are apathetic and don't care about anybody but themselves, they're going to say, oh, well. So it's not going to be them that are, um, it's going to be the empaths, the compassionate ones who really have to protect their energy when the truth comes out because yes, this yes. is going to be shocking. Yes. And find some help, find a support group. So yeah. all right, we're pretty much up to the hour now. Uh, do you have any uh, last comments or anything you'd like to share with the viewers today? Well, I'd like just to, just to add one more thing about what we were talking about and then I'll wrap up. The other thing we have is, codependence is kind of like a national sport in Canada oh totally um, so what I and I actually went to a treatment center for codependence it was such a big problem in my life and it was so helpful and one of the things I learned was the term loving um, non-attachment rather than detachment because detachment to me is kind of a harsh word it's kind of like a has a negative energy whereas loving the person but not getting wrapped up necessarily in things that aren't appropriate for you to get wrapped up in. Uh, in closing, let's see. Well, this was fun. Um, nice. I'm so so blessed. And when you when you wrote to me first of all and said, "Hey, let's let's do this," I was very excited. A um, wee bit nervous, I have to say, but very excited. It did great. It did great. And it's been it, well. It's been great. And you make it very. You facilitate such wonderful conversations sandy so good for you and congratulations for all the work that you do Thank um you. i i hope we can do this again and and yeah everybody out there just remember we are winning we're winning this war we are in a war we are it's totally probably the third or the fourth world war and it's digital it's it's energetic it's wars we've never spiritual. fought before spiritual exactly it's war we've never fought before and mm -hmm all of us are doing our best and that's all we can do is ask for guidance ask for outer guidance inner guidance and outer guidance because we all have guides we all have we all have our angels that are helping us and um and knowing that they're they're here to help us and knowing how very 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 powerful and loving we were made and we are and we're growing more and more every day Totally. Thank you, Maura. If people want to reach out to you or look at where they can find, can you share with us where they can find your work sure. or where we can uh, get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, the best way is to go to my website at www.guidedholistics.ca and um, they can uh, fill out the contact form. And um, I'm also on the YouTube channel and I think you'll put a link. 
Yes, and I'm going to put your links in the description yes. box. So resilience, strength, recovery, I called it that because that's what I'm trying to help people with. Totally. And, um, and that's you are. Thanks. thanks, Sandy. And I want to acknowledge your courage, that you have the courage to, even if you're not sure if somebody's interested in hearing what you had to say, you did it anyways, and they are coming. Thank right, so you. check out Maura's uh, uh, YouTube channel. She shares her journey, what got her started in this, because I think a lot of people are going to find your why is a lot uh, related to their whys. So, yes. Yes. so thank you very much. That's lovely. And That's we'll you. be in thank touch. You. You're you welcome. Sense. Take care, everybody. Have yourself a great day, a great week. Sure. And yeah. uh, we've got this. We sure do. Thank you. You're welcome.